to down. Yeah, I kept telling I kept telling to myself wait until tomorrow because uh you know there's going to be better lighting because it's going to be you know here now it's dark because it's night but I just finished this one I just couldn't wait until tomorrow before talking to you guys about this one. I mean if I did love the first book with which was True the Witch, I have to say that I completely love this one, the second one, Wine Witch, even better than I love the first, if that's even possible. I began reading this book with so many expectations. I wanted to see the old characters and I was wondering where the story will take them and also if maybe we will meet new characters that, you know, that will be added to the mix. And I was reading and then it comes a chapter about Bibia and I was thinking, okay, I hate her. Because in the first book, when Merrick talks about her, about his sister, he always says how entitled she is, how she thinks she's better than him, how she wants to be queen and disregards everything he is doing or wishes to do for his people because he's the one that's right and he's the one that's doing the right things, you know. And since Merrick is one of the main characters that we are going to have in the first book, um, you believe him. So, yeah, when Bibia appears in this one, I was thinking, okay, she's going to be a complete... And I was very surprised uh, because I had read, like, a couple of pages and I was completely in love with Bibia. I could understand where she comes from. I could understand her hatred about all the things that are, you know, patriarchy how she's surrounded by noble men and she keeps thinking where are the women because women can be there but you know it's like always the men that are you know in the positions of power because women always seems to write letters saying I cannot go let my husband my son my father go in my stead so yeah he has you thinking about you know about all of that and she also gives you another side of the story her own side and I did love that so much it's like the last of us the game when I was playing the second one I did hate Abby at the beginning because uh, she kills Joel and I was like I hate you and I don't want to play with you and I hate that the developers of the last of us game made us play with Abby because she was such a hateful character and then you began playing with her and you began seeing the story from her eyes you understand her perspective and you empathize with her and you end up loving her. And this is what happened with Vivia here. And for me, um, being able to write these kind of things, having a character that tells her or his side of a story, and then you have the other character seen as the evil or the less or whatever, and then having the other character speaking up and offering you a glimpse inside their minds and their own characters, and seeing how different they are from the projection that the other character, you know, offer you. And for me, that means that there is great storytelling at work here. Because, you know, it can show you how the character really is. And then you can change your judgment. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I can talk lots about Bibia because I did love her. And I love what uh, Susan Denard did with her. And as I say, with uh, the storytelling that shows us you know, the difference between different points of view and different, um, how different people can see the same situation and come to different conclusions. So yeah, I did love that. What we are going to have here, we are going to have our bunch of people that we know. We are going to have Safi that she left with the Empress, Banas. And I love the story of this too. I love how Banas, uh, when she appeared in the first book, I thought uh, she's going to be an amazing character and we are going to see more of that in here. I'm not going to say much about where the plot is going to take us because I don't want to offer any kind of a spoiler and I have to say that this second book is completely surprising and it goes to places I wasn't expecting and I was like ah yeah so yeah we're going to be following Safi with the Empress and and that's going to be one of my favorite storytellings I'm going to say the same about all the stories that we're going to have in this book because all of them are amazing but yeah we're going to have that we are going to have Isil that um, she was left behind and she wants to reunite with Safi because, you know, it's like they are the two sides of the same coin and they threat sisters and they want to be together. So Isil is trying to go back with Safi and she is going to enlist the help of the Blood Witch, Aiduan. 
So yeah, I love that painting and I love the story that develops between them and I love how they offer a different glimpse about magic and about relations, um, abusive relationships, um, more from the blood witch point of view, which uh, I'm really... I'm going to begin the second book as soon as I end, uh, the third book as soon as I end this review because it's about the Blood Witch and I need to know more about him because I think that there is a lot of darkness in his past that made him who he is now. So yeah, I want to know more about him. And I love how Isolde is a ceiling cocktail with Esme, if I remember the name correctly. And uh, she is going to be trying to outrun uh, these ideas that this uh, Void Witch is trying to put into her head. And I love how she begins to feel something for Eduan, but um, you know, three which are always told to be an ecstasy, not, do not have feelings, just, just be this cool persona. And I love her sometimes, you, you're thinking, okay, you're feeling that, but she's thinking, okay, I need Safi to interpret what I'm feeling, and it's amazing. And I love where the story between these two is going to take them, and there's going to be journey, they're going to meet new characters, but what I love most about these two is the journey that they take on themselves and uh, the journey of growth that Isel does in this book and also how Edouard de Blugwitz begins to, you know, to rethink where his life has been going on all this time. So yeah, that's another story, that <laughs> another line that I love in this book. And also we are going to have Marik and Vivian, who's amazing, and I love these two brother and sister pair. I mean, we are going to be uh, here, Merrick is going to be like our main, main character. He is going to be like the center point. And I love how he begins. Um, he's full of hatred. He's convinced that his sister tried to kill him. So he wants to accept, accept the revenge against her. And uh, he is accompanied by Cam, who appears in the first book. That's a girl that feels like a boy. And also I love that this book talks about these kind of things, about, you know, transgender and things like that. I love that. And uh, they're going to be together and they're going to have lots of adventures. I'm not going to say anything else about it. As I say, it's spoiler free. But I love how the relationship between them makes Marek evolve. And he begins to discover that maybe he's been biased and has been seeing the world as he expected it to be. Like he, ha he was owned something. Own it, owe it, <laughs> sorry, as if he was owed something just because, you know, he was uh, trying to do good, but he never stopped and thought if maybe his sister was more deserving or more prepared. He always wanted to be it, you know, and I love the journey he, he goes through, you know, because uh, he was like a sweet boy in the first book and uh, yeah, maybe he didn't see things, you know. As we are going to see here, I love how, you know, you have the two halves of the same story and you can see how both were wrong or both were right. And I love to see where Merrick went wrong judging her, his sister and how he began to see those kinds of things and how he comes to terms with that and what he decided to do at the end for me was very powerful. And also we are going to have lots of things to learn about um, the cliff, about... Um, Esme, if I remember the name correctly, the girl who controls the cliff and, you know, you know, the pupiter. And we are going to know more about how it all works. And also we are going to have more information about the Hellbards. And there is something that I love about this series is that uh, when you're reading book one, you uh, get to know a little more about the world building and everything, but you're left with lots of questions. So there are things that you don't get where they come from or you know what could happen if something like that you know and uh, in the second book we are going to get many answers to those questions about why do people cleave uh what happens when someone loses control of their magic uh why hell bars have the abilities they have but also we are going to be left with too many questions <laughs> and i hope that they're going to be answered in the following book back because that's how it works and it's amazing because it's it's very satisfying, but it's also it's like real life where you have questions and you get your answers. But sometimes those answers get more questions. And yeah, I have to say that I'm pleasantly in love with this series. I expected to like them, but I'm loving them. And I'm having, I'm having a stressful times so where for me it's been more complicated than usual to, you know, to open a book and lose myself inside the pages because, you know, when you are in stressful. And I have to say that these books are capable of putting myself inside the pages and to have 
everything happening in front of my eyes like it was a movie. It's very easy to picture all the characters because they are very fleshed out. And as I say, I love the personal journeys they all make and all the changes. And I love that we are also having things like the idea of race uh, with the blood witch and um, Isaul being from a different race and being criticized and how that made them different. And I love how Isaul sometimes it's look or treated differently and she thinks, okay, I'm used to it. I mean, it's sad, but I, it's sad that she has been treated like that and that she has had to grow thicker skin, but it helps her in certain situations. And I, I love that we have that in this book. And also this idea, as I say, of these two brother and sister, um, you know, seeing the world like what I say, it's true. And not uh, stopping to think what the other part of the you know of the siblings is thinking and I love coming to terms as I say with Vivia it's an amazing character and I hope that we are seeing more of her because you know it's like when someone tells you one story and then you know you have the whole story and it's amazing and I love that we also have this criticism about patriarchy and about the position of women about how hard that they have to fight to demonstrate that they are able to hold the same place that a man holds and also this idea of the people in power controlling the, the people who has less power, less food, less resources. And we are going to have people living here in this book, in the in Nubrevna, in situations that are very dire. And uh, Mary, when, the, it, when Mary discovers where people is living and how they are living, he's going to be very like, I can't believe this is happening. And it makes you think about the inequality that we have in real world. So yeah, I mean, this book is amazing. And I don't know if I'm making it justice, but yeah, if you like fantasy books with a lot of powerful flesh out characters that keep growing before your eyes, and an amazing story that's going to blow your mind, and I assure you, I have never read anything like this. Every step of the way was a surprise for me because nothing happened as I was hoping or planning it to happen. It happens in an even better way. Pick this one. Pick the first one, pick this one, pick the, them all because they are amazing. So thank you for watching. Bye.